to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and who came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second day. Yesterday, with that lovely weather, um, sunny, it was. It, it reminded me just a little bit about Brazil. Um, I w- walked with two other pastors around the town and to see the festivities of the Platinum Jubilee. I never saw so many people in Dingo. It was the first time I saw a crowd in Dingo. It was amazing. It was lovely. But what I want to say is, as a foreigner, I must say that I'm really impressed by the celebration of Her Majesty the Queen becoming the first British monarch to celebrate a platinum jubilee after 70 years of service. The impressive crown is amazing. It marks the glory and the importance of the queen as a monarch. It is a symbol that shows the long history. It is a symbol that shows uh, this history, the values and the importance uh, for the country. The crown is a symbol of victory, conquest, and authority. Jesus promised an eternal crown, but their actual lives were not surrounded by glory uh, or luxury, respect, and authority. They received the crown for their suffering in Christ's name. Smyrna is the modern Izmir in West Turkey these days. It was founded in the second millennium before Christ. About 600 years before Christ, however, Smyrna was destroyed and remained dead for about three centuries. And it became alive again in 290 before Christ. Smyrna, together with uh, Ephesus and Pergamum, Uh, was one of the leading cities in the Roman province of Asia. Smyrna was a city loyal to the Roman emperor. But Christians in Smyrna were loyal to Jesus, and that faithfulness resulted in suffering at the hands of the Romans. And some Jews also uh, applied that suffering they, they were a threat to the church. And John called, called these Jews as a synagogue of Satan. The population of Smyrna at that time was 75,000 people, 75 to 100,000 people. There was no church buildings there. The church uh, gathered in houses for worship, preaching, and prayers. Tradition says that there was a a man named Polycarp. He was one of the leaders in the church in Smyrna in the year uh, 155 AD. He was condemned to be burned to death at the public square, as you can see in the photo. Minutes before his death, the proconsul said to him, I will cause you to be consumed by fire if you not repent. But Polycarp said, you threaten me with fire, which burns 
for one hour, and after a little is extinguished. But you are ignorant of the fire of the coming judgment and of the eternal punishment reserved for the ungodly. So back to the first century again. Jesus himself sent a letter to the church through John. And verse 8 says this. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. So this verse tells us who Jesus is. The first and the last. He was dead and came to life again. We can see the same title, the same expression in Revelation 1.8 and also chapter 17. Notice that Jesus identified himself to this faithful church as the one who was dead and now is alive. Sometimes we think that our church is dead but if the, you know, the, the spirituality, the faithfulness is there, means that the church is alive. Jesus was dead, but now he's alive. It is also a fitting word to a city that had died and came to life again. And Jesus goes on to say to the church in verse 9, I know your afflictions and your poverty, and yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. See that there is a commendation here. Jesus commends this church for its affliction, for its poverty, and slander from those who claim to be Jews. Who, be God, uh, who claim to be God's people. Today's churches, in general, in some places, are commended for other reasons. Nice buildings, money, number of people, the preacher, the music, and so on. But Ismirna was praised by the suffering for Christ. This Ismirna's faithfulness was Suffering, material poverty, although they were spiritual, spiritually alive, spiritually rich. Those Christians at Smyrna faced economic deprivation because of their faith in Christ. Some Jew Jewish leaders reported them, the church, as a false cult. John say, says that this persecution is promoted by the Satan. These Jews regarded themselves as a pewter congregation. Verse 10 says this, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death. And I will give you life as your victor's crown. There are clear challenges to that church. Some members of the congregation will be put to prison. In the Roman system of justice that time, prison was a place where people would come out only if they confess their guilty after much torture. There will be afflictions for 10 days. Like seven, the number 10 is another image for completeness, for fullness, for totality. It means that the tribulation they will go through uh, run its full course. But there is also a word of encouragement. Do not fear suffer. Be faith faithful unto death. So there is a message here, there is a promise to the conquerors and faithful. They will receive the crown of life and escape from the second death. This is in chapter 20 of Revelation. 
and 21. And John says, or Jesus says through John, remain faithful even when facing death. Part of the full course of tribulation might lead to death. What is horrible? It looks horrible, but be faithful. Here we see Jesus' identification of himself as the one who was dead, but is now alive. Again, verse 8. Jesus himself was faithful even when facing death. The outcome of such death will be a victorious life, the crown of life. Verse 11 says, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. And the Bible says the second death, it means that the eternal death, uh, far from God, far from salvation, and in, in hell. But did you notice that there is no condemnation in the letter to Ismirna? There is no reproach. It's only suffering, but also good promises. The values and perspectives of God's kingdom are always a threat to the dehumanizing perspective and destructive values of today's society in many places. We've seen during these Jubilee festivities the queen, a monarch, and her well-deserved crown in Smyrna, we see a faithful church living out their lives as disciples of the kingdom, receiving an eternal crown coming from suffering, torture, torture and death. Yes, the terms associated with this faithful church are not comfortable at all. It means suffering poverty, being blasphemed by others, being afraid, prison, being put to the test, faith, facing death. And the complexity of Christian life, as we see in the letter to this Birna, both challenges and inspires us in our pilgrimage, in our journey as Christians. Christian life is not about living a situation and find a better place to be Christian. Christian life is rather staying, being faithful. And if that's the case, it means suffering. What is the Spirit saying to us in the 21st century? What is the Spirit saying to us as church? We need to listen to the Spirit. Without listening, there will be no revival. If we don't listen to the Spirit, there will be no strength, encouragement, and comfort. There will be no prophecy. Let's not compromise the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's not turn the gospel into an easy and comfortable thing. Are we willing to be faithful citizens of God's kingdom, no matter what the cost? What is the Spirit saying to us? Let us pray. Father, it's not about big things. It is rather about living day after day as Christians. It's not about big numbers. It's not about human power. It is about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the one who through his sacrifice, seated us in, high, in the highest place in heaven with him. All glory and honor is to Jesus Christ. We may suffer this life, but we are looking forward to this cross. The victorious life all because of Jesus. And in his name I pray. Amen. Amen.